All right. Gia Quitch, Mar uh, Marty. <laughs> Just waiting for people to sign in and we'll get started. All right. I know I, I feel right. like uh, we're calling roll over here. No. <laughs> yeah, Rich, Mar uh, Marty. <laughs> Wait, oh, sign in and Molly, there is some feedback on yours. You may want to grab a headset. Yeah. I turned it off. Okay. Yeah. I turned it back off. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. You're over on YouTube as well. So that's what that was. Right. Okay. And yeah. So I that's fine. Everybody. Gia Gwich. All right. We're just letting people join the stream and we will get started soon. Just maybe another minute. Let people log on. Geogwitch, Irish Network Greenville, and Pamela Pierce. Pamela Pierce. Right. All right. So, um, just as an introduction, uh, Leah is not going to be with us tonight, but we went ahead and recorded some with her. So, I'm going to show that on the stream here as well. So, we won't miss anything uh, from her. Uh, we'll still have all that info. And uh, she sends her regrets that she couldn't be here, but. Uh, scheduling uh, mishaps happen. All right. So now hopefully everybody already got the PDF. If you can tell me in chat um, if you weren't able to get it. Um, if you're over on YouTube, it should be in the description, the link to it. If you want to go ahead and open up that on another tab or go ahead and open it and print it out for yourself. Um, the PDF for tonight's lesson is already there. And of course, if you're on the email list, uh, you would have already gotten that uh, yesterday, I believe. Or no, this morning. Did it go out this morning? I think so. <laughs> um, all right. So I think it went out this morning. So you should have that um, to look on with. Of course, I'm going to put it up on the screen as well. Um, I just didn't know if it was going to be a little small for some people to read along with it on the screen, uh, but we'll see because uh, it's going to be a little bit smaller than normal just with how we've had to do it today. Um, all right. So what we're going to do is I'm going to move over. I'm going to take our faces away uh, in a minute and I'll let you see the recording of the Cora, the conversation. Uh, and the folklore, uh, the vocabulary. So, um, hang on a second. One, one comment okay. Lynn says, I did get last week's, but forgot to look for today. So, we have that okay. sorted in okay. our comments for today. So. All right. And um, just a quick introduction as to who we are, because we may have people tuning in uh, from other places that may not know what we're doing. Um, this is our second online lesson uh, that we're live streaming, and we are Gale Top Greenville. Um, so myself, uh, Cher my name is Cheryl, uh, and then uh, Leah, and of course Molly that you see over there. Um, uh, we all three uh, kind of man Gale Top Greenville and uh, keep it rolling uh, so that we can bring uh, Irish language events and lessons and resources to you. So uh, we want to keep that going uh, as far as we can in our area. And of course, being online, we're reaching a lot more people probably beyond Greenville, and that's great. Uh, but yes, we are based here in Greenville, South Carolina. So, um, all right. 
So let's get on into the Cora. Um, the Cora and the folklore uh, is on a recording. Uh, so as I said, Leah's not able to join us for this one in particular, uh, but she is um, was able to get on with me earlier today and record all of that. So let me go ahead and switch over to that. So you'll see the video. Um, now this video, I will provide a link. You won't be able to see it on our channel because it is a rough video. It's not edited, um, but you will get the link to it if you're on our email list. Um, so you'll be able to get the link to this video. Um, and of course it'll be in the replay as well, but I'm gonna send the link for this video out um, in addition to the people on our email list. So let me go ahead over there. And um, so me and Molly are going to be um, quiet for a little bit while this plays. Believe it or and, not. Huh? Believe it or not. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so while this plays, we'll be quiet and let y'all hear um, this. If you have any trouble with it, please let us know in the comments um, if there's anything, either the audio is not working or something like that. But we did test it. It should be working. So let me go ahead and play that. Okay, so let's take a look at our conversation, our Cora, uh, Cora and Lay. So Cloda and Tig are going out to eat at a local restaurant to spend some time catching up with one another. Um, they meet a new person who will join the conversation. So uh, let's go ahead and see what they're up to. Uh, Leah will read uh, the parts for Cloda and Cl uh, Clar, and then I will read Tig and uh, the Frasily. All right. Bavalam Anraga Saleid Agus Glena Ishka Ledahal. Bavalam Anra Freshen Agus Nirvalam Saleid Glena Ishka Agus Kapante Ledahal. Gaurav Mahagiv. Amalat Saleid? Niha Akis Malam Anra Anmalat Te. She offer Neon Makla Brekfansa. Oh, to Claram, a Clar is Clary Machara's fiar. Clar, Shotaig, Macharon Galanshta. Is Misha Taigo Kelly? Is Daslam Bulalet? Clarney Sulaban is Anandam. Ta Ahasar and Bulalet. All right, so that's our um, Kora, and as you can see, it is longer. Uh, than the last one that we had. So what we're going to do is the main function of this particular uh, Cora is to teach us ways to use the copula, which can be one of the trickier points for Irish. Um, so we wanted to go ahead and hit that at the beginning so that you can go ahead and see most of the examples of how to use it. And then of course they'll be repeated in future lessons as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at the folklore. Um, so we'll do that. All right, so um, I'll read the uh, English or the meaning and then Leah can read the, uh, the Guelga a little bit. Okay, so we have, um, okay, we'll just start again. Was or would? Ba. Good. Ma. With me. Lum. I would like. Bavalam. Or ba bawalam, if you're from bawalam. Kanamara. Yeah. Um, and then soup. Anra. And. Haggis. Salad, salad, a glass of water, glina ishka. And notice that, just a side note, notice that um, there's no word for a or an there. Um, it's included in the word um, in Irish. So I don't think we've touched on that. But um, but when you see glina ishka, which literally translates glass of water, it can translate to a glass of water. Um, please. Madahal. Also or two. Freshen. I would like, I didn't like, uh, or sorry, I wouldn't like, or I didn't like. Near Valam or near Walam in the West Irish, Kanamara. Mm -hmm. A cup of tea. Kapan te. 
I'm so used to saying that one in Irish that I almost said it in Irish <laughs> anyway. Um, all right. Um, thank you. Garamahagat. Okay. And let me go ahead and move that down. So we have, um, do you like? On Malat. So the question form. Uh, it isn't. Niha. Niha. Um, and it is that that ah uh, sound. Um, so niha. Um, that means it isn't, uh, but it's the negative answer to uh, the question, uh, the the present tense question. Um, and then it is. Sha. Sha. Uh, however. Alpha. There. Um. And this is often used to express uh, existence of something in a particular place uh, rather than the word like there or over there. Um, my friend. Mahara. Best. Is fiar. College. Kalashta. It's me. Is Misha. Or it can translate to I am, but it's literally it's me. Um, it's nice with me or it's nice. It's Daslam. And uh, meet with you or to meet you. Bulalat. Uh, blank is, na is name to me or is my name. Is Anamdam. And then uh, I'm glad. Ta ahasaram. It's literally translate gladness is on me. So, mm -hmm. um, all right. So now that we have all of this uh, folklore uh, in our heads, let's go back to our Kora. And I realized as we were um, reading the Kora for the first time that I read mm -hmm. the very last sent the last two sentences very sloppily. And that because I was reading it so quickly, I failed to pronounce Clar's full name properly. Um, so it actually oh, okay. Clarney Hulavon, and I was reading too fast. I think I said Clarney Sullivan, but it's actually Clarney okay. Hulavon. So, this, okay. uh, in case anybody noticed while I was reading through there that I made a mistake, yes, you're right, I did make a mistake. Okay, um, that's fine. Um, and we can, you know, we read them fast too. <laughs> so let me flip back to that and change my screens. Got everything everywhere. All right, so let's go back to the Korah for a second time. And this time, um, Leah's gonna read first uh, the Gwelga, and you can break it up just in like phrases or sentences, and I'll translate each one. So we don't have to do a whole line at a time. So we'll go a little slower. Um, and then I'll read, I'll say the English and translate it, and then she'll read the uh, Gwelga first. All right, Bavalam Anraga Saleed. I would like soup and salad. August Glena Ishka Ledahal. And a glass of water, please. Bavalam Anra Freshen. I would like soup too. Achmir Valam Saleed. But I would not like salad. Glena Ishka Gas Cup on Te Ledahal. A glass of water and a cup of tea, please. Garamahagwif. Thank you. Amalat Salad. Do you like salad? Niha, Akhas Malamanra. No, but I like soup. Amalat Te. Do you like tea? Sha, Afak, Nimalamakle, Brick Foster. I do. Uh, however, I don't like it. Uh, but with breakfast. So the Nimalam Ak would actually translate probably more cleanly into English too. Um, I but I only like it with breakfast. Mm -hmm. um, but it's literally, um, I don't like it but with breakfast. Oh, Taklaram. Oh, it's Claire. It's Claire. <laughs> well, it translates to Claire, but Clar. Aklar. Claire. Is Clary Mahara's fear? Claire is my best friend. Clar Shataig Mahara Claire, this is Taig. 
uh, my friend from college. Is Misha Ty Gokiela? Um, I'm Ty Gokeli. Is Stasson Bulalat? It's nice to meet you. Claire Nihulavan is an Amdam. Uh, Claire Nihulavan is, uh, is my name. <laughs> and that would be Sullivan in English. Claire Sullivan. Sullivan yeah. Yeah. Claire, Claire Nihulavan uh, is my name. Ta'ahasar and Bulalat. Uh, I'm glad to meet you. All right, so you can see how the folklore that we learned uh, in the previous section uh, fits in here. Hopefully that helps with breaking it down. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and move on to the pointy gramadi. So, all right. So let me go ahead and switch this off. Okay, so hopefully that walks you through the Kora and all of the folklore uh, that we went over. Again, I've created another memorize uh, section, a lesson two section there that will cover all of the new vocab and some of the old vocab just to repeat. Um, and a couple of things I wanted to go over with the Kora as well. So let me turn that on right quick. Grab that. Okay, so when we looked at the Kora, one thing I wanted to mention uh, was that um, here where the Frostly, which is the waitress um, or waiter, uh, waitress or waiter, um, so the Frostly um, tells them after they take their order, um, says Gorev Mahagwiv. Uh, and agwiv um, or agav, uh, depending on the dialect, that uh, word right there is um, to you all to, or to you both. Uh, it's a you plural type of adjective or type of preposition, sorry. Um, so that preposition uh, means like at you all or at you plural. Um, Whereas in the last lesson, we said Gaurav Mahagats, uh, which Agat is the you singular. So thank you singular to one person. Um, so I just wanted to point that out uh, just to note the difference. Uh, but we are going to go through our pointy grammar now. Um, so let's see. If you have any questions, please stop us. We'll address your question in the chat. Um, and be happy to do that. So I'm going to scroll down until we get to the pointy gravity. So again, as a footnote, just like in the first lesson, um, these may seem complicated right now, but we do think they um, warrant explaining. And even if you don't quite grasp them fully now, we will be repeating these things. Um, so you will see them come up over and over again, and eventually it will kind of embed itself in your subconscious as you're learning uh, as well. So it's kind of like a formula. You have to memorize the formula some. So uh, let me but go they ahead. And if, if they seem complicated, it's because they are. But the more that you get used to them, and, and this is speaking from somebody who is still does not have a grasp, but I'm working on it. The more you hear it and the more that uh, you're able to use it, then things start to make sense and fit together. That's what I found anyway. So um, yeah. don't be, it might be a little daunting, but it just- And English, so grammar, English grammar works that way too. So, you know, we don't always understand exactly what's being told to us about grammatical rules in English either. But once we see it done correctly, several times it starts to become natural for us um, so the same thing is going to happen when we see it in the Kora for future lessons um, and work with the vocabulary so uh, the vocabulary I put in memorize I just wanted to say isn't always just one word vocabulary um, some of the vocabulary that I put in is phrases so you can just literally take that whole phrase and use it as a big you know, clump section. So you're not having to learn each of the words individually, then try to figure out how to put them together. You have that full phrase that you can plug in and use. So um, some of that is something that you can uh, practice in the memorize lessons as well. 
So the first point with pointy gravity. So the main reason we had this Cora this time is I wanted to go ahead and introduce uh, many of the ways that the copula is used because when we're talking to other people, especially introducing ourselves, the copula does get used quite a bit. So we want to make sure we're using it um, in the ways that it can be used. Um, and then in future lessons, we'll talk about ways which uh, you wouldn't want to use it. Um, but for right now, we're going to focus on the ways it can be used. So the first one here is think of the copula. It means it is or it's um, or it was or it would be. So those are the three positive um, or affirmative ways that it can mean that. So it is, uh, it was or it would be. Um, so you can think of it as that whole phrase there, uh, translating to that. And um, you can think of it also as an equal sign. Um, and it also gets used in a couple of other ways. But one of the main ways is as an equal sign. So noun A equals noun B. So like, um, like she is a doctor. Is doctor E. So is the copia, doctor, doctor, e, her. It's a doctor, her. Uh, if you literally translate, it sounds really funny, um, but you'll get used to that formula. So I put the formulas here in the handout. Uh, so the two sentence formulas, not questions, but sentences, um, is your copula, uh, which is e, uh, or is, or ba, uh, so you have is or ba. So is is the present tense uh, or sometimes future tense, but it's usually not used that way. Uh, ba is the past tense or the conditional tense. It's both of those. So is or ba plus the noun, then plus the object pronoun. So we're going to look at pronouns, so don't panic. We're going to look at pronouns. But um, like when I said is doctor e, so is the copula, doctor the noun, doctor uh, e is the object pronoun for she or her. Um, so it happens in English. So in English, we have uh, she uh, is the subject pronoun, uh, and then it changes to her when it becomes the object pronoun. So it sounds fancy and complicated, but it's really just describing how we change the word she into her. And in Irish, she, S I Fada, becomes E. It drops the S. So uh, just letting you know that. And we'll take a look at that in just a minute, too. Um, so the first thing I want to go through, and here's the pronouns here that I kind of outlined here. Um, and they combine with the pro, uh, with the prepositions that we'll go over in a little bit. Um, but here's your basic forms of the copula here in this, uh, in this table. Um, so we have in present tense or future tense, which is rarely used, but present tense mainly, is to make statements like it is, um, un, so is it, is it um, in the question form, uh, not, which would be is it not, is it not, um, and then knee, it's not, it's not. Uh, and then you have the other one uh, for ba, so the past tense or conditional tense, and we use it in the conditional tense in the Cora, so you'll see that a lot. And it expresses like desire um, as well for something. Uh, and we'll see that as well. So ba, ba, and then ar or arv uh, for uh, was it, was it, uh, and then nar or narv for was it not, uh, near or nirv, uh, and that's used to say um, it wasn't, it wasn't. Um, so there you've got all of those. So, um, just a note here, the reason why I've got the BH, the V sound in parentheses there is because R becomes R of, NAR becomes NAR of, NIR becomes NIR of, only when the next word begins with the vowel. So what you'll learn about Irish as we go is that sounds and spellings change a bit in order to make things easier to say. So um, because there's a vowel coming next, that v comes into play. 
uh, so that it's easier to say. It flows with the sentence. So that's one reason it changes. So uh, a lot of languages do that. Um, it's just this one does it in a very noticeable spelling way. Um, so here's some examples. We have ischak a, it's a house. Unchak a, is it a house? Nakchak a, uh, it is it not a house? Uh, Nihak a, so this one uh, causes lenition. So that's that H there that gets inserted after the T. It makes a huh an huh sound. So Nihak a, um, it's not a house. And then the same thing with the past or conditional tense. But uh, bachak a, uh, it was a house, um, or it would be a house, uh, which it wouldn't make sense. It's context uh, that'll tell the difference between past and conditional. Um, artak a, uh, was it a house? Uh, nartak a, uh, was it not a house? And nirhak a. So this one, again, the negative form is putting that H in there. So nirhak a, it wasn't a house. So again, don't let this overwhelm you. I'm explaining it now so that it can kind of be in the back of your brain, uh, but we will see more and more examples of this. And as you go through the Cora again, you'll see a lot of examples of it too. Um, and so the copula also can express opinions um, and that's and, and desires. So that's what we see in the Cora, uh, like liking something, disliking something. Um, and it's used with prepositions. So prepositions are words like with, in, of, about, under, over, things like that. So, so let's look at using the copula, copula to introduce yourself. Um, so when you introduce yourself using the copula, uh, you may have heard Molly do it on our last section. So you did that, Molly. <laughs> just, uh, nobody yeah, else knew what I was doing. You know. yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, but she said, it's Misha Molly. So I could say, it's Misha Cheryl. Um, so that literally translates it as, it's me, Cheryl, um, or I am Cheryl. Um, so that's another way to introduce yourself or let somebody know what your name is. Um, and it uses the emphatic form. So may means I or me uh, as a pronoun. And then it changes to Misha. Um, so it's Misha. Um, so that is putting stress on the fact that it's me, not somebody else. That is Cheryl. So it's me. That's Cheryl. Um, if I were to say, um, is Tusa Molly? So is Tusa Molly, you are Molly, uh, not anybody else, you are Molly. And so I put here in this table, the emphatic forms here, they aren't used too often, uh, but instead of like in English, we would just say, my name is Cheryl, um, you know, stressing on the my, like we get louder. But in Irish, we change it to Misha. So. And that gives that stress on it by changing the words. So, uh, but you don't use them all that often. You don't hear them all that often unless somebody's like maybe speaking about an argument or, or something like that or trying to make a point. Um, so then you would hear them, but it's always used in this introduction. It's Misha plus your name. So, um, and also here at the bottom, it's also, um, the copula can also be used for introducing your profession. We're going to go into more of this in future lesson, especially I think we're going to see it a little bit in the next lesson. But um, I can say is munchorme. I am a teacher. So is munchorme. Is teacher. Um, is teacher me. It's a teacher me. So um, again, we have the copula plus the noun plus the pronoun. So is once your may. Uh, so you can practice, you can look up on tengon.ie uh, your profession uh, and practice saying what your profession is. So that can be a really good thing to do. Uh, and then we also have, I wanted to go ahead and put uh, introduction to prepositions. So prepositions combine with the different uh Pronouns. So uh, me, you, he, she, it, we, uh, they, all of those pronouns get combined with the preposition. So in our example, uh, in our Cora, we use the word lay. 
Le means with. So when we say uh, bawalam or bavalam, I would like, we're saying it would be good at me or good wit would be good with me. That's literally what we're saying. So that lum is le plus me. So bawalam or bavalam, depending on your dialect, um, is it would be good with me. Um, so that's expressing desire. Um, I would like this. Um, so, and you can use that um, as well. So, um, bavalet. So, two plus le equals let. Um, so, baval, uh, bavalet is it would be good with you. You would like. You would like this thing. Um, and so on and so forth. So, she for he or a masculine form of it plus le becomes leish. Um, she plus le is le. Uh, Wid plus le, uh, which is the we form, is lin. If you notice on our little icon, our little banner, it says Lowerlin. So that's literally speak with us. So lin means with us. So um, if Tig in the Korah had ordered for both of them, uh, he could have told the Frostily um, Bavalin. Bavalin, we would like, we would like, it's good with us. Um, so you can see how that works. And there are other prepositions that also change, such as uh, egg, which becomes agam and agat and aguiv, um, that we've already seen agat and aguiv uh, in how to say thank you. So hopefully that helps with those. If you want to see a list of some of the ones that change, I do have the list here where I put a little link here. It says click here. Um, it's not all of them, but it's a good many of them. Most of the ones you're going to see often. All right. So let's go ahead and look at opinions. So uh, just like ismalam, ismalam is the present tense, whereas bavalam is the um, conditional. So I would like versus I do like. Um, so ismalam te, I like tea. Uh, ismalam cats. <laughs> ismalam cats. Uh, so I like cats. Um, Ismalam Madri. I like dogs. Um, so you can express what you like by saying that, and you can express what you don't like. So Nimalam, uh, Nimalam. I don't like. Um, let's see. Think of something I don't like. <laughs> uh, Nimalam Dawanala. I don't like spiders. Um, so. Uh, here's some opinion expressions here that I've included for you. You can practice with them. Um, they aren't in the um, in the memorized vocabulary yet because we haven't used them in a Korah, uh, but you may see them later. So isbralam is I love or it's excellent with me. It's fine with me. Uh, bra can mean fine or excellent. Is evenlum is it's lovely with me. I love uh, this thing uh, or this this event. Um, isachlam, isachlam, I find it strange or it's strange with me. Um, so like if you're talking to somebody and you're like, it was strange that such and such happened. You can say, um, uh, ba'achlam, uh, it, it was strange or isachlam, it is strange uh, with me. Um, also, isdoilam, isdoilam is I think or it's my opinion. Um, it's literally, it's my opinion. So when you're talking to somebody about something, uh, you can say istoilum and then express what your opinion is after that. So um, the other thing I wanted to touch on is that there is no yes or no in Irish. And this throws some people for a loop, but it's really not as hard as it seems. It does take some extra listening um, because you have to reply in either the affirmative or negative of the verb that was asked of you. Um, so if you see in the Cora, they say anmalet te. So this time the verb is the copula. So it's not an actual verb. It's the copula. So we're going to answer back in the positive or negative of the copula, which is sha or niha. So anmalete, do you like tea? Is tea good with you? The answer would be sha, it is, or niha, it isn't. So as you can see, even 
things that look like it would be a, like a yes or a no. These are actually very small phrases uh, for it is and it isn't. Um, and we'll see this again and again when characters in our Cora um, ask different questions using different verbs later on. Uh, whereas someone's going to repeat that verb either in the positive of that verb or the negative of that verb to say, you know, either it is or it isn't. Um, so if I was to ask, uh, say, if I was to ask Molly, um, you know, do you speak Irish? Uh, mm -hmm. She would answer. Yeah, she would have to answer if I was saying that in Irish, she would have to answer with I speak or I don't speak. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the way she would answer. And there's a really cool video. And if I can find it, I'll include it in the um, the email. But I found a really cool video where they interviewed someone whose first language was Guelga because uh, they lived in a Gale talk, but then they learned English. So uh, at a very young age. But the uh, person interviewing them was trying to get them to say yes or no and kept asking them yes or no questions. And the person kept repeating the verb back to them in English, in English. So it's like, um, do you have a cat? I do. Do you have a dog? I don't. They wouldn't say yeah. yes, or no. So it's really not that difficult to wrap your mind around, but it is something that we don't usually do in English. It so is, what we and you can definitely still hear that a little bit. Like I, I spent a little bit of time on the Aran Islands where people do, uh, that is a part of the Guel talk there. You know, especially with a lot of the older folks on the island, it was the same yeah. kind of thing. Because I, I'm a journalist, I ask a lot of questions, probably too many, and it was never yes or no. It was always just kind of repeating the question or, um, yeah, I mean, exactly like you would in Irish, but just in English. So it's really yeah. interesting to see that. Yeah, so it's, it's one of those things that it, it's, so common for them to do in Irish that when it comes to English, it just kind of carries over, uh, even though it translates, uh, but they still don't use the yes or no. Um, and of course, you know, some people when they're first learning Irish may say sha and ni ha for to try to mean yes or no, but it doesn't actually answer the question correctly when it's using other verbs. So if I were to ask you, do you speak uh, Irish, and you said "sha." Um, that'd be like me saying, "Do you speak Irish?" And then you saying, "It is," and it, it wouldn't quite sound right. I mean, I get the get the idea. Uh, it's it's something where you can still communicate, but it's just not answering the question clearly uh, or correctly. So, if that makes sense. So, hopefully, that makes sense. Um, did we get any other chat questions while I was on the other page? No. Um, is I hear crickets. So. <laughs> That's all right. Um, yeah, it's a good thing where they've all left. Nah, so. uh, there's still um, there's still several people here, so hopefully they're hearing us. But um, but yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. I know this. I told you last lesson that we went light for the first lesson. We went light, um, so we did get a little bit deeper this time. And the copula is one of those things that I. Um, a lot of people don't like to teach it for a while, but I figure if you get a little bit of a start on it and the beginning and then see it repeated over time, it becomes easier. Um, so it's one of those things that you don't want to be, you don't want to be afraid of it. Uh, and you want to like try to use it right from the get go. Uh, even if you use it wrong, that's fine. Uh, you know, making mistakes is how we learn language. It's how kids learn language. It's how everybody learns it. So. All right, so we've come to the end here. Let me go ahead and in the chat, um, if anybody's um, watching on a computer, I'm going to post the Zoom information. So I went ahead and posted in chat. Um, so there's the link to the Zoom meeting and the meeting ID and password. Um, so if anybody wants to join the Zoom, we're going to try to do well, that. I, oh. What I might do, um, because I set that for 8 o'clock, and since everybody's oh, okay. yeah, go ahead. Time, I might go ahead and send a new um, 
Zoom unless, I mean, unless everybody uh, already has that Zoom link there. But I was just going to set it uh, at 7.50 or whenever we wrap up here. Um, if yeah. you could just send me here, I will put my email um, hmm, here and you can just send me your email and then I'll send the invite your way. Okay, so, so yeah, if, if anybody watching this wants to participate in the Zoom like conversation practice, huh? I so said we would love to have you. So. Yeah. So Molly just put her email there um, in the chat. Um, and so if you can email her right now, if you want to do the Zoom. Um, yes, we will be having another lesson uh, next week and try to do a Zoom around that time sometime. Um, but yeah, so we'll open the Zoom. Um, and Molly will send to any email she has that they've said they want to do it. She'll send that out uh, in just a little bit and open up a Zoom uh, right after we wrap up here. So we're testing this out. It's it's more for people who want that conversation practice, be able to say what we learn in vocab to each other. Um, and at this point, like we can really do uh, introduct self introductions and things like that. So. All right. Well, thank you guys for watching uh, for our lesson two. We will be having our third lesson on next Thursday at seven. So we'll keep the same day, same time. Uh, so we hope to see you all there. Um, if you know anybody who's also interested in uh, learning Guelga, um, let them know to join in the stream and hop on. So but we will see all of y'all later. Slongaful. Hopefully very soon. So hopefully mm. a few minutes here. Feki Megaluahu. Or Feki Megaluahu. Slow. <laughs>